Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Plant Fanatics. We're out here in the greenhouse today. We're going to be going over 10 things that everybody should know before they start a garden, so stay tuned. The first thing that you need to know and have in mind when you're starting a garden is that everything in the garden takes time. Nothing's going to go quickly, nothing's going to go as planned. Uh, typically the first year you're not going to see much happening, especially with your fruit trees, your fruit bushes, and just because you can't see what's going on doesn't mean there's not something going on. Usually the roots are going to be growing, that's going to happen the first year. It's really going to be the second, third, and fourth years that you start getting the fruits of your labor. So just keep that in mind before you start a garden and don't stress yourself out too much. You're not doing something wrong, it just takes time. Number two, you just need to know that the best way to learn is to get out there, get your hands dirty, and do it. Watching all these videos is fine. In fact, I highly recommend it because you need to absorb a lot of information, but at a certain point, you just have to realize, okay, I gotta go out there, I gotta get it done, and that's the best way to learn. And uh, don't be afraid to just get out there, give everything a try. You're not gonna have all the answers for everything, so just figure it out as you go. But that's one of my biggest pieces of advice if you're a new gardener. Just get out there and do it. The third thing that you need to know is just you're going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. We make mistakes in everything that we're doing that's new. And that's how we learn. That's how we grow. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's going to happen. The most important thing that you can do is make sure you learn from those mistakes and then keep moving forward. Don't give up just because you kill a few plants or you know whatever's going on. If you have pest issues, Continue to learn, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. They're going to happen. Learn from them and grow. The fourth thing that you need to know is that the garden is an artistic expression of who you are. So it's very important that you go out and you find plants that really speak to you and that those are the plants that you plant into your garden. It's fine to watch all these other people and learn from them because the first thing that we do when we're learning something is find somebody that we look up to and kind of replicate what they've done. And then eventually we start moving in and adding our own style to what we're doing. So I highly recommend that you guys, when if a plant speaks to you as you're looking at it, I highly suggest that you plant that plant because it's gonna make you a lot happier in the end. The fifth thing that I think every gardener needs to know is how to propagate your own plants, whether that be starting your plants from seed or taking cuttings from plants and actually rooting them yourself. I think it's very important that gardeners learn to do this because it's going to save you a lot of money in the end. Buying new plants can be expensive, especially your annuals, tomatoes, peppers, things like that. It becomes very, very expensive to continue to buy the seeds time after time after time. So I highly suggest that you get heirloom varieties, which means they're going to come true to seed and actually start harvesting your own seeds every year and then planting them yourselves. And that's going to save you so much money. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people really aren't putting out there. You can literally take a cutting from a plant that you like and learn how to make it grow roots and make your own plant. And I mean, I can't even tell you how much money this is going to save you because I've spent so much money on my garden. And before I learned how to propagate plants, I would have continued to do that forever. So I can't even imagine my garden if I hadn't learned to do that. So I highly recommend that you learn to propagate your own plants. And this is something that's going to take a lot of time, just like everything in gardening. You're not going to learn it all overnight. It's a lifetime journey. But I highly suggest that you spend some of your time doing this because it is going to save you so much money. So the sixth thing on my list is going to make a lot of people cringe because it kind of gets into something that's kind of out of the art a little bit and more into the science. But I really recommend that you learn the basics of how a plant functions. So what the roots do, what the leaves do, what the stem do. Um, I think it's very important that you learn that because it's going to be important to the health of your plants and how you care for them. So I just recommend, I'm not telling you, you know, go out and become a scientist. I just think that it's very important, in my opinion, to learn basic anatomy of the plant and how it functions. It's going to save you a lot of headache. Um, you know, if you don't have a target in mind, you're just going to be wandering around. You don't know where you're going. So if your plant is sick, it helps to know how that plant works and how to best go about treating it. And there's lots of videos on this topic as well. So I highly suggest you take a little bit of time and just learn a little bit about the plant's anatomy. The seventh thing that I recommend is that 
It's pretty simple. You just walk around and you look at how nature does things. If you look at a forest, you'll notice that the, the ground is never bare. There's always leaves on the ground. There's always decaying wood, uh, decaying organic matter. That's going to be very important to replicate in your garden to have the healthiest soil possible. Things like mulch, grass clippings, leaves, to add these things constantly to your garden is really, really, really going to help out as far as how your garden grows and the health of your garden because we're imitating what nature already does and that's the best way to garden. The eighth thing that I really want people to understand is that a garden can have two different functions. One of them being beauty, which you'll see a lot. You know, you drive around to all these different houses and their gardens are just, I mean, super beautiful. But that's kind of where it stops. It just looks beautiful. There's another function of a garden, which is the actual edible portion of the garden. Uh, it has a usefulness, whether it's herbs for medicinal purposes or fruit to actually eat, veggies to eat. Uh, gardens can serve for that purpose as well. And I think a lot of people kind of forget about that. There's more than just beauty to a garden and an edible landscape is beautiful too. So I highly suggest that you at least look into useful plants that you can put in your garden that are very useful to you as well as beautiful. Number nine is a pretty simple one that I think a lot of gardeners tend to forget because they're kind of pursuing what they feel is best for themselves. But if you live in a neighborhood and you live around other people, it's very important that you not only think of yourself, but you think of your neighbors as well because you're representing a bigger community, the gardening community, and we don't want everybody to have a bad rep because somebody doesn't want to make their garden beautiful for their neighbors, so neighbors can start complaining. It's easy to let a garden kind of get junky in a way. You keep stuff everywhere. So I highly suggest that you learn to keep your garden clean and that you make it very beautiful to the eyes if you live around other people because it affects them as well. And it also speaks to our entire community as a whole. So just always be thinking of other people. Be conscientious that you live around other people as well. And number 10, last but not least, is use your garden to make friends. I can't tell you how many people I see that have such beautiful gardens and they are so shut off to the world. You know, you might see a kid go and walk around the garden and looking at it and it'll be like, hey, get off my grass or something like that. Get out of my garden. If a kid or an adult walks over to your garden and is admiring it, you know, they're not doing any harm to it. Always remember that there's other people just like you that are interested in gardening. And when somebody's admiring something that you've done, you should take that opportunity to teach them what you know and to help get somebody else into gardening because it can be very easy to turn somebody off of that and to think of all gardeners as, as mean people, okay? We should always have the attitude that we wanna continue to teach other people to love gardening as well so that they can replicate the things at their house. We want gardening to be fun for everybody. What is the point of having a garden if other people aren't allowed to come admire it? So for instance, I have a garden on the side of my house. I have a park behind my house and my front yard is one of the only yards in this area that leads to the park. If I see people walking through there, yeah, I might say something, you know, about it being our yard and, you know, maybe ask about it, but I really like to take the opportunity to let people know what we're doing. And usually uh, they have a lot of questions for you. You'd be surprised because it's, it's a beautiful thing. So I just highly suggest that you be open to sharing your garden with other people in any way that you can. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that would help you out in your gardening adventures, but these are the 10 that come to my mind for everybody who's beginning to garden. Um, but if you have any other things that you'd like to share, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to see people interacting down there and learning things from each other. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share with all of your friends. Thanks so much for watching, guys.